Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I had a, nine wines that uh, uh, didn't fit uh, easy categorization, so I split them into ones that were going to be slightly heavier and ones that were going to be lighter and more aromatic. And this is the lighter and more aromatic side of them. Hopefully, I may be wrong. Let's just dig in. Uh, I've got an Albarino. Have I got four, four different countries? I have got four different countries. Um, so, um, yeah, first one is um, Laga da Costa Albarino 2011 from Rich Baixas in Spain. Let's give it a whirl. Bright, clean, fresh, nutty. There's a citrus edge, there's a peach edge. Um, it smells like it's going to be perfect summer day. Um, yeah, sit and have some prawns type of wine. And you come to taste it and um, Sometimes I, spit, I, I look at Albarino on the Spanish side and Alvarino on the Portuguese side and I think of the Portuguese ones as having maybe a little bit more of that salty briny tang but I get that here uh, on the Spanish side there's this briny uh, character just going through it keeping it fresh keeping it perky and making me even more um, uh, yeah wishing that I had, I had a plate of prawns maybe I should go and find some after this but uh, better try the other three first um, right next one it's uh, Gruner Forever uh, from um, Lens, uh, Lawrence Moser the fifth I probably should have done this um, one before because it's only 10% alcohol but uh, anyway from the Nieder Osterreich and um, give it a whirl. Now Grunewald uh, is able to do quite big fat peachy wines in, in uh, warmer bits of um, places like the Wachau and Kamptal and Kremstal but here it's on that light almost grapefruity uh, lilt side, flat lilt if you want to call it, so you've got the pineapple, a bit of the, it's like the exotic pineapple uh, but the grapefruit is the, the thing that's coming through. Touch of pepper, and uh, sometimes people get a bit of lentils in uh, in here, in Grunewald, in I don't here. Light, lean, lively. Really good, sappy, um, mouth-cleansing style. Um, there's a juiciness to it. Sometimes wines at this, this level of alcohol, either they're relying on sweetness to... Um, uh, they, they so they stop the fermentation um, uh, and left some unfermented sugar, or they're picking things a little bit too early. Here, it probably is picked on uh, picked quite early in terms of compared with some of the other Grunewald in, in Austria, uh, but it doesn't feel like there's anything here that's underripe. So this is fresh, uh, slightly bracing. Again, uh, we, we won't get a, a sea air, but in the, in uh, uh, in Lower Austria, but um, uh, there is uh, there is that little briny edge coming through as well, keeping it fresh, keeping it perky, keeping your mouth entertained. I like that. And two Rieslings to finish. Uh, first one is Forest Estate in. Um, uh, well, they're split. You know, they've got uh, vineyards in a number of places. They've got uh, some in Hawkes Bay. But this is uh, Marlborough Forest, the Valley's uh, dry Riesling from the Wairau region in um, in Marlborough. Now this is full uh, fleshy, petroly style. It feels like it's going to be a, a dry wine. Um, New Zealand Riesling, um, they, it was pretty good in the 80s and early 90s. And these, uh, I've been quite disappointed by uh, a lot of what's gone in the, la in the last few years. Suddenly it seems like maybe the last three or four years, a few people have uh, thought, oh, hang on, they're doing pretty good stuff with it over in Australia, as they have been for a long time. Um, let's see if we can emulate them and move away from a, is it, it that, that, that there's been a slightly wishy-washiness about the wine. Here, it's certainly not wishy-washy. It's got that bit of development, uh, three three years plus old now, um, uh, but it's still got this uh, this tight, uh, zingy lime, lemon, and uh, touch of mineral coming through. It smells good. Tastes good too. Um, I think there's a touch of residual sugar here. Uh, it says dry yet beautifully textural, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were like four or five grams just to give it a little bit of roundness. Um, and um, uh, so there's this mineral edge, there's a, there's a dry, earthy, stony river pebble uh, type of character, that, that, that sort of mineral. And then there's the citrus, and then there's that touch of petrol from the development. Uh, looking really nice now, looking as if it's got the potential to uh, keep going for quite a long time. like it. And talking about going for quite a long time, um, final wine uh, is uh, Hugel's. Jubilee uh, Alsace Riesling uh, from 2005 vintage. Um, so, um, I mean, this is young for high-class Alsace Riesling, so uh, I'm looking forward to this. 
and it smells really good. I mean, there's the, um, it's still, it's still got that perky freshness of youth, but it's starting to pick up a little bit of um, uh, maybe buttery, toasty characters. I don't know, I never think of butter as, uh, as something I get in, re in Riesling, but uh, a touch of that there, this toastiness, uh, and then this earthy, herby, mineral character coming through. It smells really, really, really good. Yeah, it's spicy, um, honeyed, uh, this um, uh, rich, um, it's, it's strange because this, this is quite rich flavour, but then there's this citrus and mineral precision holding it all together. Um, it's certainly uh, not a young wine, but it's in this really lovely, confident, uh, uh, early middle age. I wouldn't be surprised to see that still going strong 10, 15 years from now. Uh, but um, I don't think that bottle's going to get a chance to go, to go uh, 10 to 15 years from now. 10 to 15 minutes might even be pushing it. Really tasty. And what is lovely about it, it's off dry, but it's the sort of wine where um, you, it's, it, it, you certainly wouldn't, wouldn't pair it with anything apart from savoury food. It's got this mineral and uh, yeah, backbone bone of mineral and acidity, and it just keeps going on and on and on. A bit like me, so I'd better stop. Now I can go and have a glass of it. So see you soon.